When you stand outside 20 Maresfield Gardens in villagey North London, you see a warm, welcoming home, somewhere that feels it's out of an E.M. Forster novel. It looks like a very English home. It might even look ordinary. But I suggest you step inside. To visit Sigmund Freud's final home, now the Freud Museum, is to step back in time to turn of the century Vienna, a time when that city was arguably the intellectual capital of the avant-garde. But it's not the Vienna of Gustav Klimt and Egon Schiele we enter, I suggest, but an even darker, even more foreboding world. Right in the heart of one of London's most respectable suburbs, behind closed doors can be found the return of the repressed, a space where our ancient selves, those ancient primitive desires we would like to think we've put to sleep, live on and on and on. As you enter the museum, you're greeted by a captivating image. It's a copy of a drawing by Rembrandt of Moses holding the tablet of the Ten Commandments above his head. Freud had only moved to London to escape the Nazi regime in 1938, managing to take his antiquities collection and a chunk of his library with him. But it was in Hampstead, North London, where Freud penned his final great work, Moses and Monotheism. In it, Freud argued that Moses was no ancient Hebrew, but an ancient Egyptian, who'd led his close followers out of ancient Egypt during a period of political turbulence. This strange revision of his own Jewish heritage, which dethroned his religious father, is an apt image to greet the visitor to the museum. Rembrandt might be showing Moses about to smash the tablet in anger at his seeing the Israelites dancing around the golden calf. It's also a powerful image of a persecuted Jew smashing age-old traditions which have shaped European history. Freud was a rule breaker. <laughs>